last week, it was Peter who recognized Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and Jesus built his church on the faith, the rock of faith of St. Peter. And today, get behind me, Satan. Can you understand, though, uh, Peter really cares about Jesus. He's his Lord. He's his rabbi. Uh, he's his master. Uh, and he loves him. And so when he hears what we call the Paschal mystery, life, suffering, death, resurrection. It ends with resurrection. But when he heard suffering and death, he didn't want that to happen. You're the Messiah, you're the Son of God, we can't let this happen to you. So it's basically uh, motivated because he cares about him, he loves him, and he wants him to avoid Good Friday. Let's have Easter Sunday without Good Friday. You know, we have crosses all over the place. In the Catholic Church, you, you, you always see a cross in the sanctuary. There's a cross on the top of St. Catherine Drexel. There's crosses everywhere, and we wear crosses. Have you ever thought you could live without the cross, without the Paschal Mystery? Uh, let me, give me some what they call poetic license, okay? And don't call me to everything I say. But um, I kind of did. Uh, you know, when I was born, Harry S. Truman was the President of the United States. Harry Truman. And uh, Harry was rebuilding Europe after the war was over. Harry was rebuilding Europe with the Marshall Plan. And gosh, I mean, we, we, were, we were just so grateful of peace and now prosperity. And, and now we were really... Uh, tremendous force for, for, uh, for leadership. Uh, and uh, as a little kid in the 1950s, uh, everything was really a wonderful time, I thought, uh, to, to grow up. Uh, and uh, we did have a problem, though. Uh, polio. Polio. Uh, in fact, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he was in a wheelchair because he contracted polio, actually, when he was in his 30s. Uh, and so parents in the summertime were so afraid that their kids might catch polio. Well, in 1955, Dr. Jonah Salt developed a vaccine to prevent polio. And uh, what that was, it was just so exciting. Uh, and, and I, I grew up near Quonset Point, and the Navy doctor there, he, he invented what they call the gun. You could be inoculated, boom, boom, boom. So you, wouldn't, wouldn't, would, you could do it in, in a second. And he came to our school, a Catholic school. He went around, uh, and he was a captain in his wonderful white uniform, and all the kids lined up, and the sisters were there, and our pictures were in the paper, and boom, boom, boom. We were all inoculated against polio. Now, we're kids now. This is poetic license, but we're talking. Oh, my gosh. If we can conquer polio. This is 1955. Maybe by the year 2000, we can eliminate all the major diseases. Cancer, diabetes, heart disease, dementia. Why not? We can do it all. Uh, and then uh, John Kennedy gets elected president. We're going to the moon. We're going to go to the moon. And there was this atmosphere of progress, this atmosphere that nothing was impossible. Onward and upward, the sky is the limit. Uh, and after all, of course, I would have a better standard of living than my parents. And our kids would have a better standard of living than us. It would just keep getting better and better and better. I grew up in that, in that air, in that atmosphere. Uh, progress is our most important product. Wasn't focusing too much on the cross. <laughs> Was focusing on how wonderful 
everything is and is going to be. Well, uh, it's 2017, and many wonderful things have happened. I mean, look, look at what medicine has, has, has done. It's extraordinary, extraordinary what medicine has done uh, in, in, in those years uh, and, and how, how far we've, in, with technology and transportation, so much, so much we've done. Having said that, we don't have heaven. You, you remember when Susan Moss spoke uh, back when the food pantry began in Wolfboro, uh, there were like 17 families. And now, hunger has increased dramatically. Homelessness. I don't think I, I don't know if I remember anybody homeless in my town in the 1950s. I, but, but now look at the number of homeless people. And addictions, all these different addictions have skyrocketed. See, so uh, uh, my, uh, my dream when I was a little kid, you know, we can do this and we can do that, uh, it, it wasn't talking about suffering and death and, and the cross, okay? The Paschal Mystery. Uh, we can't live this life without the cross. Uh, Victor Frankl, he was a Jewish psychiatrist uh, who was a, a, a interred a prisoner at Auschwitz, uh, the, the concentration camp in Poland, and he survived. And he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And basically it says that really only God, only spirituality can give us meaning to this life. And he, he says that uh, the question is not why is there suffering? Because you can say, well, if God is all good, why does he allow suffering? No, he said suffering is a part of human life. It's a part of everybody's life. In other words, the cross is the part of everybody's life. And the question is, what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with it when we face the cross, when we face suffering and death? And, of course, the, the, the Catholic answer, the Christian answer, is you, you unite it to the cross of Christ. Uh, and and, and it, it helps to purify the world. It, it helps, helps to, to save the world by uniting our, our sufferings to his sufferings. So we're, 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 one, uh, we're one with him. When we face suffering, uh, we can do three things. We can curse God. If you're a good God, why are you allowing this? We can curse God. Or we can run away, flight, and say, well, it's not my problem. It's not my problem. We can run away. Or we can embrace it. Now, I, I bring this all up because of uh, Harvey, Hurricane Harvey. Look at what has happened to Texas and Louisiana. And it, it shows us how powerless we are. We can't control this. We can't stop this from happening. This, this is the cross. This, this is uh, how many people have died. And uh, hundreds of homeless, all of these people homeless. And you know the Texans, uh, when Katrina hit New, New Orleans, they were the ones that, that brought them into their homes and took care of them, and now, and now they're in such, such, uh, such, 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 such dire need. So th we, we, can, we can curse God. We can say, well, uh, I'm going to run away from this. I'm not from Texas. It's not my problem. Or we can embrace the cross. And we say, hey, we're in this together. We're one. We're one people. We're one nation. We're one church. And when you suffer, we suffer. See, there, 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 there's, the, there's the mature answer, folks. There's the mature answer. We all share it. And now many have been asking, well, what, you know, what is our church going to do uh, to help uh, the victims of Hurricane Harvey? And the, the American bishops throughout the country, this is going to happen next weekend, we're taking an emergency collection to assist Catholic charities USA to provide assistance to the victims of Hurricane Harvey. It's volunteer, but it is an opportunity for us as a church nationwide to reach out and to share and to care. And that's, that, this is the cross. This is the Paschal mystery, okay? 
so uh, it was a wonderful time to grow up. It was a wonderful time. Uh, and it's a wonderful time to be alive now. What an opportunity we have to exercise our faith. What an opportunity we have to care uh, and to share.